In this week's video, we'll take a detailed look at the weight of the evidence to help us answer the question. Do the charts and data align with the recession and ongoing bear market narrative? Human beings tend to like forecasts because they create certainty in an uncertain world. But the reality of the situation is we remain in a rare and complex environment with an almost infinite number of possible outcomes. A week ago, we noted that the market held up relatively well despite the intense media coverage of the debt ceiling. We also noted that positioning relative to the odds of recession said we should be open to more upside. Last week, we noted on the weekly momentum front, we continued to see incremental and encouraging progress, and the charts in front of us last week, for the most part, remain constructive. And we know if a recession is around the corner, and there's going to be a big hit to earnings, that will be reflected in the charts and data. Thus, under our approach, rather than attempting to forecast a very uncertain future, we prefer to take it day by day, trying to stay aligned with the market. So all of that was from last week. How about this week, as of the close on Friday, May 26th? We're still in a situation where the number one concern is really inflation in the Fed relative to the threat of an imminent recession. It's just not showing up in the data yet. We're still dealing with the debt ceiling, and thus far the charts have held up pretty well as noted in this Seeking Alpha article. You can find it by Googling the title on your screen. One of the reasons why inflation is not cooling off at a faster rate is the economy is holding up extremely well. So there's no question the Fed and inflation are still in the picture. And as noted in this article dated May 25th, the labor market is still strong. It's not screaming recession. And relative to their COVID peak here and the peak from 2022 here, for the most part, even in the face of the banking issues, credit spreads have remained relatively tame. There's a long list of economic data released on Friday, including new inflation data. And not surprisingly, when the economic data and the inflation data came in on the stronger side, expectations relative to a Fed hike in June, they've increased, which is something we're going to have to continue to keep an eye on. The big news this week came from NVIDIA relative to AI. The projected sales of 11 billion this quarter, that would represent a 64% jump from last year. So in this context here, what's the weight of the evidence message from the markets this week? We've talked about these concepts many times. If market participants were concerned about an imminent recession and a major hit to earnings, they would expect the Fed to be getting closer to cutting rates. And under that scenario, market participants would expect tech earnings to take a hit because typically earnings take a big hit when we go into a recession. And if those negative scenarios were true, we would expect the XLK IEF ratio to be falling, not rising. This is January of 2023 here. Notice when the ratio breaks above the moving average cluster here in Q1, the 250-day moving average in black is on top right here, and the 20-day moving average in blue, the fastest moving average, is on the bottom. And what that tells us is when we break out here, that more time may be required before we can move further in this direction, and that's exactly what happened. There's a subtle difference on this chart. Here, black, the slowest moving average is on top in January, and blue, the fastest moving average, is on the bottom. We have the exact opposite in the present day. This is the convergence of the trends here, and we're flipping from a concerning look to an encouraging look with black, 250-day moving average on the bottom, and blue, the fastest moving average on top. The slopes of all of the moving averages are now up, and price is above all of the moving averages, telling us the probability of this breakout holding with this type of profile is higher than if we just move to this level with this type of profile. So now we see a shift from an uptrend to a downtrend and back to what now appears to be an established uptrend. And this week, XLK divided by IEF broke out of a 17-month base. The longer a market goes sideways, 
the bigger the move we can expect to get when we either get a bullish breakout or bearish breakdown. And as always, the commentary here is about the chart in front of us. We're not making any assumptions about whether or not this breakout is going to hold. We'll see how it evolves next week. Very similar situation here. Black, the 250 day or the slowest moving average in the moving average cluster is on top in January of this year. Contrast that with where we are today. The 250 day is on the bottom and it's trying to turn back up and here it was sloping down. So there's a subtle but very significant change in the trend profile of SCHB divided by IEI between January and May telling us to keep an open mind about the ratio moving in this direction. Exact same concepts here with the very broad S&P 1500 index relative to one to three year treasuries. If a recession was right around the corner, a devastating recession if we think in extremes and a massive hit to corporate earnings, and the Fed was about to lower rates in response to all of that negative news, we would prefer to own one to three year treasuries under that scenario because corporate earnings are about to take a big hit. That's not what we have here. We have another subtle shift. Black on top here in Q1. Now black is on the bottom. Still has some work to do. It's just a very constructive look from a probability perspective. Very similar situation with the more narrow S&P 500. Black on top, the slope is down in January. Black on the bottom, the slope is turning up in May. If we just glance at this chart, it looks like a long-term range, but there are some subtle shifts that have been taking place. This is diversified bonds, AGG, riskier bonds, relative to more conservative seven to 10 year treasuries. What once acted as resistance in 2020, what once acted as resistance in 2021, may now act as support in 2023. And the subtle shift here is where the ratio is turning up. This is the first time that the ratio has tried to turn up above this level and above this level. It's a subtle shift. This is more of an indecisive look in here. When we turn up, we're below. When we turn up, we're below. When we turn up, we're below. Not the case this time trying to turn up in a logical area relative to this trend line and we're doing it above this level and above this level nothing earth shattering it's subtle but it leans bullish we've covered this concept several times in recent weeks and months think of this for the most part as cash one to three month t-bills relative to tech stocks the big chart goes from 2009 on the left down here all the way out to the present day, May 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. This is a weekly chart. This is the weekly cloud. Looks very complex, but it's easy to understand. In 2009 here, if we zoom in, after the major low, the ratio breaks below the cloud against cash, for the most part, relative to tech stocks. So this is a risk on look as the market's bottoming in Q1 of 2009. So after the market's bottomed, we get blue below red, price below blue and red, the lagging span below price, the cloud flips from green to red against one to three month T-bills relative to XLK, and price drops below the cloud. Very, very similar look in 2023. Everything that we just said about this chart over here on the left, is true of the chart on the right. And those are the only two times we have that type of look on the chart where all of those things are happening in unison. BOTZ, the Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, nice break above the neckline. This looks good, and this ratio here is telling you that XLK, for the most part, has been even stronger. BOTZ divided by XLK has been weaker since about February 1st. Both of them look good. Notice the 250 day moving average here is turning up in black as we're breaking out of this long term base. The colored lines are anchored volume weighted average price lines. They speak to cost basis information. 
and the psychology of market participants. EFA came back right to an area where if you're a bull, you would like it to hold. Right side of the screen, SCHB, broad US stock market relative to three to seven year treasuries, also has a constructive look where it says buyers are in control. And buyers are favoring the broad US stock market relative to more defensive three to seven year treasuries. Intermediate corporates relative to three to seven year treasuries speaks to risk acceptance or risk aversion in the credit markets. This is a good look here from this prior high that we're back above it during Friday's session. S&P 500 in isolation with this type of look, buyers still in control. The same can be said for the very broad S&P 1500. Buyers still in control above the line relative to the 2022 high here and above the line tied to the October low here. Would market participants rather own the broad S&P 1500 or three to seven year treasuries? Right now, the answer is S&P 1500. None of this predicts anything. It just speaks to what's happening now and it helps us assess the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. It's a daily DeMarc chart for VT, global stocks. This is the COVID low here. When this TDST line turns solid as it did here in 2020, it's telling you from a probability perspective and in the world of DeMarc that the trend has most likely flipped from a downtrend to an uptrend here. And of course, that's what happened after that. Similar situation in the present day. In January of this year, qualified TDST break here. It's still in play. It tells us to keep an open mind about global stocks flipping from a downtrend to an uptrend. And as we continue to go through the charts this week, I we want to be asking ourselves, do these charts align with the theory that we're already in a recession or a recession is imminent? It's a weekly to mark chart of SMH semiconductors. A couple things stand out. We have the qualified TDST break that occurred in 2023 here telling us from a probability perspective, we flipped from a downtrend to an uptrend. And we did that in 2023. This plus right here tells us on this count, the blue count, that we're just now getting into wave three up. Wave three tends to be the strongest of a five wave move. Nothing magical about any of this. It's like any indicator or chart. It helps us assess odds. These are the six data sets that the National Bureau of Economic Research tends to lean on relative to declaring a US recession. And these are small charts, but notice this drop here, the shaded areas of recession you can even see the big drop on the small chart. You can see it here. 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 You don't really see anything like that in the present day. These are the charts, our data sets in front of us today. You can pause your video player here. When this happens, good things tend to happen in the stock market. One year later, on average, S&P higher by 18.2%. This is a study from Bespoke Investment Group. Let's shift to a holiday weekend chart blitz. NASDAQ composite monthly relative to the S&P 500 when momentum, the Copic curve turns up like this, good things tend to happen from a longer term perspective. Good things tend to happen from a longer term perspective. This is the look of the chart in the present day. Technical analysis helps us with reference points and guideposts during Thursday's session on May 25th at 1144 AM. The NASDAQ composite was still struggling with this gap area in here, and what once acted as support here may now act as resistance. You can see a zoomed in version of the chart May 25th at 1146 AM. We fast forward to Friday session at 11.18 a.m. Eastern Time. It looks like we're trying to move out of this long-term period of consolidation. Weekly momentum still moving in the right direction and looking less and less like these concerning periods. 
Monthly Copic curve in isolation for the NASDAQ. Nice look here. Thursday's session at noon, we cleared this level, this level, this level, and this level, and this in 2003, this in 2009, and this in 2023, and this in 2016. Really doesn't look anything like this failed rally attempt in 2002. Really doesn't look anything like this failed rally attempt or bear market rally in 2008. So NASDAQ weekly during Thursday's session up here, we were basically flat for the week, up 0.15%. This is noon on Thursday the 25th. If we fast forward about 24 hours later to Friday the 26th at 11.23 a.m., we we're up 1.89%. Again, this is occurring during a week where the media is giving a lot of coverage, worrisome coverage, to the debt ceiling. May 26th at 11.24 a.m., weekly RSI at 65, well above this number here, well above this number here, and well above this number here. I've been covering this chart over here on the right for quite some time. It still looks constructive. As possible at some point, the NASDAQ is going to need to take a break or at least a relative break, even if good things happen. I have to have realistic expectations. Here's January, here's an up move, here's a counter trend rally, an up move, a counter trend period, and now we're moving up again. At some point, there's going to be a counter trend move even if good things happen. Nice look in here, volume by price, trying to clear the level. Nice look with the moving averages. Showed this candle last week. This is this week on Friday at 11.25 a.m., another Nice looking candle above this consolidation period in here. This is weekly momentum in January of 2022. Dropping below the zero line, this is weekly momentum in May of 2023. Weekly NASDAQ cloud batting four for five. Big improvement relative to where we were in October. Still need to clear the cloud, but the cloud has flipped from red to green. Software stocks this week trying to break above this important region in here. This week price above a lot of relevant volume by price regions in here. And unlike the NASDAQ composite index, the NASDAQ 100, 5 for 5 during Thursday's session relative to the weekly cloud. This look in here looks significantly different from the look in here in 2022. Broader market breadth is still a concern. That's an undisputable fact. However, that doesn't mean that the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 100 and the NASDAQ can't continue to push higher. If that's not the case, then all of the charts that we're covering in this week's video will start to shift, and they'll start to shift in an observable manner. That may happen very, very soon. It just hasn't happened yet. NASDAQ weekly as of Thursday's close, RSI at 67, well above this number in 2001, 2002, and well above this number, the maximum number during this counter trend move in 2008. In January of this year, orange, the slowest moving average, is still on top. In May, it's on the bottom. One of the next reference points that we can think about for next week is here. This high here is 42.18 on the S&P 500. Close below that level on Friday. This is during the session at 11.29 a.m. This chart of XLK is on our Twitter feed. Before the NVIDIA news, we had what looked like a failed breakout attempt here relative to this gap. And then after the NVIDIA news on Thursday, we gapped above it. Typically, that's a good look. It's an indecisive look that was resolved in a bullish manner. Also noteworthy, the 50-day moving average in blue above an upward sloping 200-day. We have a long-term base here, and we're trying to break out of that long-term base. If we zoom in on this XLK chart, we're above this area here, and this is early April of 2022. If the S&P 500 cleared a level that XLK has already cleared, 
That's above 4,500 hypothetically. Not a prediction, but often the leaders lead and the laggards follow. 2008 monthly PPO drops below the zero line. 2023 monthly PPO is trying to turn back up above the zero line. Clients and regular viewers know we've been watching these weekly RSI numbers on the S&P 500 for a long time. During a failed counter trend rally in 2002, the highest weekly RSI could get was roughly 55 here. Similar situation during a failed counter trend move in 2008 within the context of a bear market. 54 and change. Weekly RSI in 2022 and early 2023 was stalled in the same general area until this week. This is Thursday here on your screen. This is May 25th. We are at 55.9. Finished the week up here at 59.28. That's nothing earth shattering, but it's a subtle difference relative to this, this, and this, especially relative to all of this. And it tells us that market participants are perceiving things in a little bit different light today than they were in 2022 and early 2023. So the longer we remain above this line here, the more relevant it becomes. We're also able to close this week above the pivot at 4050 and above the top of the cloud here at 4154. I believe we covered this chart on the final bar a few weeks ago. 200 week moving average S&P 500 trying to make a stand here at a logical level. This looks different relative to 2001, 2002. And the present day over here on the right side looks different relative to this move in 2008. True strength index. If you know your market history and you look at major lows here in the reading on TSI, the present day looks more like a low relative to the failed counter trend move in 2002 and the failed counter trend move in 2008. Doesn't predict anything, just speaks to odds. Had a post this week on Seeking Alpha. You can find it by Googling this title over here on the left side of your screen. It examines the S&P 500's 30, 40, and 50 week moving averages under numerous scenarios, some bullish and some bearish. That article covers charts for the S&P 500 index. This is a chart of the NASDAQ using the same 30, 40, and 50 week moving average. This week, blue, the fastest moving average, is back on top. That's different from anything that we saw in here in 2022. And you can see typically when that happens, good things happen. Typically when that happens, good things happen. And as you can see from the table on your screen, good things don't always happen. But on average, a year later after something similar, the NASDAQ 100 was up about 15% a year later, 34% two years later, and roughly 49 or 50% three years later. Median gains all very similar. It's noteworthy the drawdowns were also relatively significant on an average and median basis. Have to have realistic expectations about how markets operate in the real world. Thus, if the NASDAQ has some give back, that wouldn't be out of character from a historical perspective. Google Weekly Cloud, May 26, batting 5 for 5, a much improved look relative to Q4 of last year. Down here, you're 0 for 5. Using the FAN principle, 3 to 7 year treasuries relative to SPY, this is the risk off look as the ratio is rising. Broke the trend line here for the first time in November of last year. Broke it a second time here in 2023. Third time, potentially a charm. Chart stated May 26, 1044 a.m. Eastern Time. Constructive look here on Friday. Longer above, the more relevant it becomes. IUSG is similar to VUG in the Vanguard world or SCHG is in George in the Schwab world. June of last year, full bore bearish look with blue, the fastest moving average on the bottom. You can see the much improved look in the present day with the 250 week moving average flattening out and possibly trying to turn up. Probably fair to say this looks discernibly different from all of this. Russell 1000 growth relative to IEI three to seven year treasuries. 
long-term period of consolidation here and a breakout to the upside. This is Tech IYW relative to gold GLD, May 16th. An indecisive look in here, still in a range. Since then, we have broken to the upside. This is a weekly chart with the 200 week moving average. We're looking at the same ratio. This is near a major low here in 2020, the COVID low. And this is a bottoming process here in 2016. So NASDAQ 100, the triple Q's relative to foreign developed EFA, both of them look good in isolation, but it's noteworthy. The ratio up here, this is where the NASDAQ peaks. This is last year during a failed rally attempt. The rally attempt in the present day is starting to look a little bit better, but you can see the moving averages here tell us it's possible that even if QQQ relative to EFA breaks out in this direction, it may still have some work to do in terms of consolidation. Much improved look down here on the weekly cloud for the triple Qs in isolation. Make an argument, this is your left shoulder, this is your head, this is your right shoulder, and this is a break of the neckline, and the neckline is almost parallel to the 50-month moving average in blue. The triple Qs relative to the S&P 500. It's a NASDAQ 100 ETF QYLD that also writes covered calls, meaning it generates income. This is the risk off look for the markets in 2022. You can see the ratio is rolling over and now starting to favor QQQ over the covered call version. Three steps to a probabilistic trend change. We have an upward sloping trend line. Step one is we break the trend line here. Step two is a lower high here relative to this high. And step three is a lower low. And we did that this week. Blue, the fastest moving average on the bottom. Price below all of the moving averages. The moving averages look like they're trying to roll over against QYLD relative to QQQ. Covered this many times. This is a risk on breakdown here in January of this year, and then a mess of consolidation for several months, and now another breakdown favoring bullish probabilities. Notice the profile of the ratio and the moving averages here look significantly different from the profile here as the S&P 500 is peaking in January of 2022. Very similar concepts here. Here's early 2022 in this ratio. Here's your risk off look. You can see it rolling over. This in the present day looks significantly different from 2022 back here. Think about this ratio in terms of recession probabilities. In a horrible, devastating recession with a big hit to S&P 500 earnings. And in a situation where the Fed is forced to cut interest rates, would you rather own IEF? or SPY? Well, the answer is IEF typically, which means the ratio would be falling and that's not what's happening. This is Friday's session at 10.38 a.m. Eastern Time. Weekly chart up over 1% here and batting five for five, bullish five for five in favor of SPY relative to IEF and trying to print a new weekly high above this high here. Similar concepts here. If you like to flip it around, this is SPY relative to one to three year treasury bonds. This looks significantly different relative to what we have in the present day. SPY divided by SP low volatility, defensive SP low volatility. We get the cross here. Good things happen in the market. Cross here. Good things happen in the stock market. Cross here after the COVID low. Center line of the Bollinger Band turns up. Good things happen in the stock market. This is this week. XLK, three steps for a probabilistic trend change. Step one, we break that downward sloping trend line. Step two, we make a higher low here relative to this low and this low. And then step three, we eventually print a higher high above this high. And then after that, we come back and we retest that breakout. So let's call this step 3.1. And then eventually we make another high here in May, call that 3.2. 
So now we have a series of higher highs and higher lows, which is an uptrend. And notice, counter trend moves, counter trend moves, counter trend moves, 100% normal and to be expected. So at some point, even if good things happen, XLK is going to move in this direction. Upper right hand corner of your screen, tech XLK relative to GLD. It's a confused mess on May 11th. It's not what we have anymore. We have a clear break in favor of XLK relative to defensive gold. These are the unadjusted versions of XLK relative to SPY. So this is a ratio that you're looking at here, trying to break above an 18 month box. And so far it looks to be a successful break. Longer above, the more relevant it becomes. The 50 day moving average here also exceeding the high from early 2022. Covered this chart on Twitter possibly more than once. Ratio gets extended from the long-term trend, comes back to trend, and now is trying to resume that trend. It's a monthly chart going back to 2016. This is the 50-month moving average. We take a longer-term view here. We also see that monthly momentum turning up above the zero line with a bullish cross. What does that tell us? tells us that this, from a probability perspective, these are counter trend moves within the context of an existing uptrend. And this cross tells us that we're trying to resume that existing uptrend. XLK weekly, this is Thursday, so it doesn't include the gain on Fridays. That's a constructive looking candle in terms of buying pressure, constructive, 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 all of it occurring above the weekly cloud. And you can see in 2022, we spent most of the year below that cloud, batting 0 for 5 down here today on the weekly cloud, batting 5 for 5. Lagging span above price, blue above red, price above red, price above the cloud, and the cloud has flipped from red to green. This is as of the close on Thursday, May 25th. Defensive staples relative to SPY underperforming by 5.21%. That doesn't look like market participants that are overly concerned about an imminent or ongoing recession. Similar look here after the major low in 2016. Right now, this looks quite a bit different relative to this move in this direction as the S&P 500 is peaking in October of 2007 over here. And after that, the 50 month moving average turns up in the present day. It looks like it's trying to turn back down. This is defensive XLP relative to XLK. This is a risk on look after the major low in 2016. You can see this look is similar to the look that we have in 2023. Over here, if we look at XLU, a defensive position relative to SPY, you can see a breakdown here in the month of May and a similar breakdown after a period of consolidation for XLV, defensive XLV healthcare relative to SPY. You can pause your video player here. We've covered this on Twitter. This looks different relative to everything in the rear view mirror. You can find the chart and the tweet here at Shivako Capital on Twitter dated May 6th. Similar concepts here telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. A tweet on March 14th. Daily cloud, five for five for Apple, AAPL, trying to clear the August 2022 high. Weekly cloud, also five for five. We could show numerous examples of concerning breath charts. Here's one that the bears probably won't show you. INDU, Dow Jones Industrial Average, as of the 25th at 1119 AM Eastern Time was down 4.13% for the month of May. Here's a bullish divergence with market breath. Dow new highs, new lows climbing higher. 
weekly VIX still looks different relative to everything that we saw in calendar year 2022. Shot on your screen is dated May 19th. We said the present day really doesn't look like the risk off period in here. During Friday's session, EFA divided by IEI was up 0.95%. EFA divided by IEF up 0.92%. Doesn't scream imminent recession, nor does this or this. You can pause your video player here. This is monthly cloud EFA foreign developed stocks relative to seven to 10 year treasuries. This is the risk off look here in calendar year 2008. Looks quite a bit different relative to the present day. And you can see momentum in 2008, calendar year 2008 never gets in this blue box. This is where we are in the present day. We're not only in the blue box, but we're above the blue box. This doesn't really look anything like this. From an economic and price perspective, some concerns here about China. You can see FXI over here on the right side of the screen. If we look at emerging markets and take out China, they look quite a bit better, but obviously China's pretty important. That would be the bad news. The good news would be it's possible that they will respond by adding liquidity to the global liquidity system. That's to be determined. Cover this in detail in a past video. This chart is dated May 4th. It's a little bit of a concern here, but we said as long as we hold above this orange line, we don't want to get overly concerned. So this is May 4th. How does the same ratio look today? Starting to improve a little bit, and we're still holding above that line. Probably fair to say this in the present day still looks better than 2022 over here. This is more of a risk off look. This is more of a risk on shift. US dollar weekly trying to make a turn here, but for now still making a series of lower lows and lower highs, but this turn look here is noteworthy. You can pause your video player here. This is the US dollar relative to the S&P 500. Typically a look similar to what we have in the present day is associated with good things happening in the stock market. VEU global stocks was up 1.21% during Friday's session. So this weekly chart looks even better. But right now it's still above an upward sloping 30 week and this is as of Thursday's close the 25th so it doesn't include Friday's bullish session. We're above this area here still and above this area here. VT global stocks monthly we're looking at the exponential eight month moving average in blue and the exponential nine month moving average in red. Blue the fastest moving average is trying to flip from the bottom to the top, you can see similar looks, 2009, 2012, 2016, and 2020. You know your market history, those are favorable risk reward periods. Here's discretionary relative to staples. Thursday's close, May 25th, looks even better during Friday's session at 1.50 p.m. Eastern time. Roughly 2 p.m. here, XLV, SPY, XLU, SPY, down 1.42%, down 1.76%. This look favors bullish outcomes. This look favors bullish outcomes. We're still in a complex market with a lot of moving parts. Thus, it's important that we take it day by day and try to avoid making decisions based on psychological fear or the fear of something that might happen rather than something that is happening. We don't have a resolution of the debt ceiling yet. The odds favor a resolution in the longer term. We absolutely positively could still see some volatility related to this topic next week. Not making any assumptions there either. Economic data thus far holding up well. Still have to keep an eye on inflation and the Fed. And as we've just shown with numerous examples, the charts continue to have a risk on bias. So our objective is to stay aligned with the weight of the evidence, 
Understanding that if the charts and the data shift, we have to be willing to adjust. As always, the commentary in this week's video is based on the charts in front of us. We're not making any assumptions about what might happen tomorrow. We'll continue to take it day by day and think about scenarios and probabilities rather than trying to forecast a specific outcome, which brings our ego into the equation. So as we walk forward, we'll continue to ask and answer, does this data set, does this chart align with or contradict our base case? And we all know the only way that we can do that effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.